Welcome back friends. In this short video tutorial, we will be learning the mode of action of botulinum toxin. Now, botulinum toxin is known to be the world's most potent toxic till uh, date. And it is a kind of neurotoxin. So, it actually attacks the neurons or nerve cells of our body. Now, instead what it does actually, it blocks the neurotransmission from the nerve ending to the muscle ending. Because that's the actual case. So, so let me take a color here. Uh, okay. Okay. So what happens actually, there are neuromuscular junctions that are present in our body, which controls the movement of our muscle due to different stimuli. <coughs> For example, you can see here, this is a neuron, this is a neuron ending, and this is the muscle. And there is a place where neuron and muscle are very close to each other called neuromuscular junction. Now the role of this region is that there are vesicles that are present in the terminal of neuron here. The vesicles will be filled with different chemical mediators like acetylcholine, it can be filled with glycine or uh, gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA and different other chemical molecules. Now some of those neurotrans, they are called neurotransmitters, some of those neurotransmitters can act <coughs> or can be secreted for contracting the cell muscle cell or some of them are there to stop the contraction of the muscle cell. So neurotransmitters are there, some are acting as helping in the contraction of the muscle, some are acting uh, blocking the construction of the contraction of the muscle. So <coughs> it depends that it occurs properly, otherwise the muscle contraction will be uh, will be bad and as a result of wrong muscle contraction, wrong muscle coordination, it will be a horrible uh, effect. So body can <coughs> body cannot so our own muscle can't be controlled by us so it will be a dangerous situation that's what is called the paralysis right so paralysis can be of two different types one is that un, uh, <coughs> the way to not controlling the actually paralysis means uh, the 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 mistake or uh, inability to to control your own muscle movement right so it can be of two different type one is spastic another one is flaccid spastic paralysis means uh, if your uh, your muscle is getting contracted it is not coming back so actually it is having two forms one is a contraction contracted form and then the relaxed form right relaxation so this is a balance between construction, contraction and relaxation. Now what happens, if your muscle always remains in contracted form, it will be called as a spastic paralysis. And if your muscle remains at the relaxed form, it will be called a flaccid paralysis. <coughs> okay, now the <coughs> toxin of botulinum causes a spa flaccid paralysis. And toxin secreted by tetanus bacteria causes spastic paralysis. Both of them are paralysis. Both of them are not uh, able to control your muscle movements, but <coughs> they are acting differently because they are blocking different type of neurotransmitter secretions. So let's begin. <coughs> now what happens in this case, actually, that in this case what we can see here is uh, the so so let the normal thing. The normal thing is that if this is the neural ending. And this is the muscle layer. So in this neural ending, there are vesicles. Inside the vesicles, we are having we are having chemical mediators called neurotransmitters. Like, and in this case, the neurotransmitters we are having are acetylcholine. Now, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which is required for the contraction of a muscle. Now, for example, now nothing is going on. Uh, you uh, don't need to do anything else. Your muscles are very, very much relaxed. Now suppose you hit some some stimuli from outside from the environment and your muscle need to be contracted for getting you to the action. Now for that particular section, acetylcholine must be released from this neural <coughs> terminal and they will be uptaken by this muscle receptor molecules here and then as a result of that your muscle will contract. Now that's the normal thing to happen. Now for this to happen, there is a coordinated fashion of different protein molecules. For example, these are called snare proteins like SNAP25, syntaxin, synaptobrevin. These are the different snare proteins that, that are uh, associated with this contraction or relaxation of the muscle. Now look at that, that synaptobrevin is a protein attached with uh, the vesicle that is there inside the axon terminal of the neural ending. 
and on the other hand sin syntaxin and snap25 both of them present at and attached with uh, this <coughs> neural uh, ending at the nerve ending and they are embedded in the membrane you can see the syntaxin is embedded in the membrane of axon at the terminal but synaptobrevin is embedded onto the membrane of vesicle right so it is very very important for the release of this acetylcholine to have a direct contact between synaptobrevin and syntaxin so you need to bring synaptobrevin and syntaxin close together after that you also require some accessory proteins called SNAP25. So the first job is to bring synaptobrevin and syntaxin in close proximity. Second job is to bring SNAP25 in the picture because now SNAP25 will help in, the, in, in bringing this vesicle very very close to the membrane so that they can dock and the neurotransmitter acetylcholine can release in this case. right? So SNAP25 plays a very vital role. And once it will be fused, then the neurotransmitter will release and then the neurotransmitter will go and bind with the acetylcholine receptor that is found onto the surface of muscle cell. And then binding of this acetylcholine to the receptor of the muscle cell will trigger several downstream processes, downstream signaling and then it generates the contraction of the muscle. That's the normal case. Now what happens if a botulinum toxin is injected into the individual body? The botulinum toxin is an exotoxin. It is made up with two subunits, subunit A and subunit B. And this in this two subunit, B subunit is responsible for the binding. This is the large subunit and A subunit is for the activity. It is a small subunit. As you can see in this picture, this black protein is designated here as a botulinum toxin and this red molecule that is popping out from the cell membrane of the axon terminal is called the botulinum toxin receptor. It's not actually the receptor, <coughs> botulinum toxin receptor name come because botulinum binds with it, but actually it's a kind of normal receptors that are found onto the surface of our host cells like neurons. And what botulinum can do, the botulinum toxin can go and bind with this kind of receptors. And it actually binds with this receptor with the help of its large B subunit. So botulinum toxin will go and bind with this botulinum toxin receptor at this axon terminal. After that, there will be a signal and invagination will go on and a vesicle formation will be go on because the process is called endocytosis and more directly it is called receptor mediated endocytosis because the receptor is mediating the process in this case. So after the endocytosis is done, there is this protein and attached large subunit with the with, with a heavy chain with the receptor and small chain is embedded and then small chain or the A subunit will be cleaved outside this, this endocytic vesicle to the cytoplasm of the axon terminal. That's a very important stage. So after the engulfment, there will be a cleavage between the A and B and A or small active subunit will be released out to the cytoplasm of the neuron terminal. And then this particular protein subunit A will come and they will cleave the SNAP25 protein. So you know the SNAP25 protein is important. It is necessary for docking this vesicle filled with neurotransmitter with the axon membrane but it is now blocked due to the cleavage of SNAP25 protein. As a result, there will be no neurotransmitter releasing so there will be no binding of neurotransmitter onto the membrane receptor of the muscle. As a result, muscle contraction will be halted. So the muscle, when it requires to be contracted, it is now not contracting. It is always relaxed. Now this is also a paralysis. Though you try to contract the muscle in this case, but you can't because there is no release of adequate acetylcholine neurotransmitter there. So this thing is called flaccid paralysis and this is conducted by botulinum toxin secreted by Clostridium botulinum bacteria. And this toxin is known to be the most potent toxin in planet Earth till date and a very very small concentration of this toxin can eventually kill you in minutes so that's uh, so so imagine that if this is the situation occurring in your lungs then what will you do no there will be no respiration and eventually you can die because everything is about muscles because your heart is having muscles if, if it is occurring in the heart it won't be contracted you can die right so that is a very very dangerous situation in this case so that's kind of it and i hope this is helpful 
Thank you.